Valdosta State University to kick off, trailing 21-14 at homecoming. We don't know how much time left in the second quarter, probably about midway through or so. And Jerry Dillard's going to do the honors. Going to have the ever dangerous, and I mean the last time he proved how dangerous he was, Vince Glover back there to receive the kickoff. Glover's going to take it again at the 9, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Comes to this side, 21, 22, 24 yard line, and this time the Blazers make sure that he doesn't do anything beyond that. Billy Poole is over there on the stop of former Lowndes High School product. So Glover doesn't do the heroics he did last time for the Choctaws, and now maybe this Blazer defense of Mike Majors can really bite its lower lip and bend its back and come down and stop these Choctaws from Mississippi. Well, it's the first time that Mississippi College has had to start to uh, start field position backed up a little bit. And, boy. Uh, uh, so maybe this Blazer defense can take advantage of that. Mike quickly, third quarter score, Kentucky leads Georgia 28-27. Ooh, got a tight one. Frederick Baker's back in at quarterback. Two backfield mates behind him, receivers left and right. Blazers rush four. Pitches it deep to Blackman. Blackman tries to get to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, and out of the field. Side of the field. A big play of offense indeed as Edward Mitchell comes over there and runs Blackman out of bounds. But he picked up tremendous yardage on the play, a 35-yard gain by the ever-talented Kevin Blackman. It'll be a first down, Mississippi College. Like two fighters just back and forth, and one knocks the other one down, and then the one gets back up, and then he gets knocked down again. Back and forth they go. Whoever has the ball last in this one. 44 yards away from Glory Land. First and 10 for the Clinton, Mississippi visitors on a Saturday afternoon at Cleveland Field. So much for the good field position, uh, backing them up a little bit. Here's Baker, two men behind him. He's going to go first man through his fullback. Got hit hard by Parsons, and then he left forward and got maybe another yard on the play. Andre Randall is there on the stop, along with Marcus Johnson and other Blazers. Here's Andre Hampton getting up as well. And the fullback carried the football that time. Jay Bourne, the senior from Columbia, Mississippi, picks up a yard. It'll be second and nine at the 42-yard line. The sky got a little bright just a minute ago. Now it's graying again and a little bit of a mist in the air. We like right, Blake Duncan's up uh, uh, and, and jogging on the sideline, so I think he doesn't appear that it's a serious injury, so uh, that, that's good for the Blazers. Second and nine, Hal Mummy down talking to Chris Hatcher just down below. Mummy in a sport coat this afternoon. Baker's going to roll right and look to throw the ball down the field. Over the middle, got his man there, and he's unable to hang on to the 28-yard line. Took a tremendous blow from Andre Randall and Marcus Johnson and Tony Hill as he tried to catch the football. Good throw by Baker, though. He put it right into his chest, and I think it was the black shirts defending that really caused that pass to be incomplete because the throw was right in Ben Sanford's chest. Yeah, it was a good throw there uh, by Cedric Baker, and he's not known. He comes into the game 26 of 54 for 351 yards. That's only 48% uh, completion percentage, but he made a nice throw there. 21-14, Blazers down seven. We're in the second quarter. Motion man to the visitor's side. Here's Baker. Baker looking to throw again on the quarterback. Draw right at the middle, 40, 35. And by George Parsons at the 35. He's a yard short of the first down. Just a yard short of the first down, it will be. Should be a fourth down at about, well, yes, yeah, about a yard. Right at a yard to go. Got to get to the 34. They're going to spot it right at the 35. Just inches away from the 35-yard line. 21-14. Nope. No question about it. Uh, the Choctaws will go for it here, fourth and one. I think their philosophy, uh, we talked about it. They want to hang on to the football, and this is a chance to do it. They got Baker in there, quarterback. He's under the center. Got that big fullback board behind him. He's going to pitch it deep, however, looking at any pitch to two deep, and the Blazers are going to stop it. Blazers are going to stop it. No chance. Erasmus, Harvey, Edward Mitchell, George Parsons, Andre Hinton, Walt Boy. No way for the ball carrier to go on that particular play, and they knock Glover down back there, and the Blazers are going to take over the football. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. The stop of the day by the Ombre defense of Mike Blazers. Uh, that's a big play we were looking for. Great play by George Parsons there. Pursuing up the field, forcing Kevin Blackman in. Uh, great play by the sophomore from Leon High School in Tallahassee, Florida. Here's Chris Hatcher. He's in the gun, standing at his own 35-yard line. His team trails 21-14. He wants to tie it up. He's going for it. Oh, the flash came and he catches it. And he dropped it. And he dropped it at the 22-yard line in flash. 
juggled it a bit right at the 25, and he juggled it for five yards, and I thought he was going to haul it in, but not quite. Yeah, unusual, right? Nice straight down the middle of the field in between the safeties. The throw was there. Uh, Flanders looked like he uh, tried to catch it in a strange way. He didn't like he was going to just, you see a lot of them cradle it uh, dead on the run there, but that time uh, tried to reverse his hands and catch it and just couldn't hang on to it. It'll be second and 10 at the 40 yard line. Hatch is in the gun again. No pressure, tremendous time. Over the middle, got his man Steve Greer. First down, Blazers in the Choctaw territory at the 45 yard line. Steve Greer, Mr. Dependable. Boy, he just, uh, it's so funny to watch him. He catches it, uh, he just sets the ball down and walks back to the huddle and uh, kind of like, hey, I expected to do that. And, uh, no. uh, that's kind of cool. Blake Duncan is onto the field now. He's off again, so he is okay. Coming Saturday afternoon. Hatch is under the center. Dominic Ross is his lone setback. Two wideouts right side. Going to give it to Dominic Ross right up the gut. He's going to take it to the 42-yard line, but he's going to be knocked down there. Man who got a hand on him and pulled him down was Roland Spann, the senior nose guard from Brandon Mississippi. It'll be second down. Picked up three. Second along seven from the 42. Don't know how much time's left in the quarter. Got to be getting down three or four minutes, maybe. Blazers trail 21-14. A clock uh, malfunctioned at the start of the football game and then again in the second period. Worked for a while. Hatch is going to bring Williams on to the right side. He lined up on the left side. He's got... Pinder, Pinder to the 40, to the 35, to the 34-yard line on the short pass play. Another first down for VSU. In there to make the stop for the visitors from Clinton is Roland Spann, again the nose guard from Brandon. But it'll be a first down blaze. A chance to take this one in and tie it up before intermission. We wish we knew how much time was left, but we don't. <laughs> nice play there. That, that play is almost there like a running play. A little quick screen, just uh, Chris Hatcher raising up and just straight to, to Sean Pinner line up on the left side and almost like a running play. Hatch is in the gun, got Duncan on the right side, he catches the ball at the 35, to the 30, to the 28-yard line, and pulled down by a bunch of white shirts right there at the 28-yard line, picks up seven on the play, it'll be second and three at the MC. McBeath, the linebacker over there to stop him, along with one of his mates, Willie Turnage, another linebacker, the junior from Gulfport, Mississippi. Nice play. His knees, hands, whatever was hurting a while ago were okay. Yeah, it is, because we certainly need him. Uh, but a good play there. We're keeping the pressure on those Choctaw linebackers. They're playing the run and having to defend the pass, and uh, that time we get out and cover. Looking down the field into the end zone. Flash is there! Oh boy, that's what we like to see right there. I tell you what, that's big time. And just fired a strike to Stanley Flanders who ran a post corner route, beat his man and just uh, didn't beat him by much, but a great catch by Flanders, great concentration. Here's Lil Reed for the extra point. Hold is down. Twenty-one. Where are the store once again? State University trailing 21 to 7 comes back in the second quarter and it's all knotted up at 21. Now this ombre defense. Let's see if they can stop Cedric Baker and Kevin Blackman and Brad Strom and all the other talented players from Clinton, Mississippi. 
Well, they talked about wanting to hold on to the ball, and you see the Blazers make a fourth down stop on defense. The offense comes right back and scores. Dillard kicks off. Is Glover going to get it? He is at the five. Right up the middle of the field, 10, 15, leaps over one player, 20, knocked down at the 21. Again, good pursuit by VSU, and we got some pushes. And now the flags are going to go down. In fact, it the crowd rises to its feet a bit to see what that's all about. It's about an 11-yard return, and then the push it and shove it started. Let's see. Well, let's hope that it's offsetting because I'm not sure, but there was a lot of pushing uh, going on here. Let's see. They got one. <laughs> well, what do you think? They're going to give it against the Blazers. That doesn't surprise me a bit uh, considering the amount of penalties we have. But uh, Mississippi College actually started the shoving there. Unfortunately, they caught number 44 for the Blazers, Raymond Baylor, retaliating, and that's always what happens. The uh, official usually doesn't see the first lick, but he always sees the second. And that uh, that's unfortunate because, once again, the Choctaws get field position, and we haven't stopped them very well, although we did the last series. We haven't stopped them very well prior to that. Al Murray with arms outstretched and palms up to the South Georgia sky as if to say, what now? Brad Strom is the quarterback, first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Going to go to Blackman up the middle, and uh, check that. It's going to be the fullback to the 49-yard line. Katie uh, Hampton, the sophomore from Meridian, he's going to get an MC first down. And, John, it looked like the Blazer defense was still kind of stunned from the penalty and the pushing and the shoving and that sort of thing. They weren't really ready for that play. Yeah, I mean, I think you're exactly right. They were still seem to be kind of looking around like uh, like they were complaining to the officials, you know, why did that go against us? And uh, this shock to offense and uh, coming right back at you. And again, offensive line, uh, that fullback quick hitter is a bit good play for them. Here's Strom under the center. 21-21. Strom's going to keep it himself. Broken play right side. Can he turn the corner? He can at the 50. Sneaks inside the 50 to the 48-yard line. Over there on the stop for the issue is Mike Gibson, the cornerback, but Strom did all of that on his own. He wanted everything to go left, and all of a sudden, the door was closed, so he went back right, and he was just high-stepping his way, trying to get across midfield, and did, and actually picked up four yards on the play. It'll be second and six at the block. Yeah, we didn't kind of, we don't expect that play from Strom. You expect Cedric Baker to make that play, but Strom on a busted play there just uh, broke a couple of tackles and worked his way back on the right side and picked up four yards. Baker up almost every series this afternoon. Head coach Terry McMillan, his third year at MC. He's 115, lost 10, and tied three. Want to pitch it deep, and he throws it out quickly, left side at the 45. He's going to take it to the 43-yard line. Sanford is the man who caught the ball. He's going to be, I think, a yard short. Make the run out of the backfield, and then whirled quickly and threw out to the left side and caught Sanford. Seven on the play. Still going to be a yard short. And the Blazers are going to send in Big John Henson to bolster that defensive front on a running situation. Andre Randall's going to come out of there. It'll be third and very short, about a half a foot there. 21 all. Don't know how much time's left. We're in the second period. Mike Jason and John Lastinger along for you. Enjoying the great game of football. NCAA Division II style. Strom is under the center. Going to go straight ahead to his fullback. He's going to get hit hard. He didn't get there. He didn't get there. The Blazers really came hard and pushed him away. Erasmus Harvey was there. Edward Mitchell was there. And he did not make it. It'll be fourth down. And they're going to have to put it away. Yeah, nice job. Nice play there. Good, good call by Mike Major, the defensive coordinator there. He uh, got enough, kind of stacked the line of scrimmage there and was able to, when you get enough bodies there, the Blazers can use that quickness and penetrate by the... Here's the snap and the punt. Up and away, very high. Going to let it go over his head and going to be caught by MC down at the four-yard line. The MC player who actually caught the football was Richard Myers. And it's going to be marked right at the five. So the Blazers 95 yards away right here, tied at 21. And we don't know how much time's left in the second quarter. Looking down, George Parsons coming off the field. Kind of banged up there. Looks like he may have a shoulder injury or something. So uh, we'll have to keep watching there. Blazers are going to bring him up. Hatch is going to be almost stand. Well, Dominic Ross is lining up in the end zone. Hatch is going to be under the center. 
95 yards away from taking a lead in this football game. Hatch wearing the long sleeves in the black this afternoon. White numerals trimmed in red. Got Robert Williams in motion. Going to give it to Dominic Ross at the 5 to the 10. Spins to the 13-yard line. Maybe the 14. Finally in there to knock him down. 1-7 knocks another 7 down. Brian Richardson, the junior from Forest, Mississippi. And Dominic Ross, the sophomore from Jacksonville, is able to pick up 9 yards on the play. And that's the way to get out of a hole, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, nice running. What I like there is Dominic Ross to take off the left tackle there. But as you saw him uh, about to be hit, he covered that football up with both arms. Going to be just a yard and a half shy of the first down. Hatches under the center. Same offensive set. Dominique Ross, long setback. He's got Robert Williams out wide to the left side. Going to give it to Dominique again. Hits it off the right tackle, and he's able to get a yard. Maybe two, maybe three. It'll be a first down Blazers at the 18-yard line. Checking into the Blazer offensive unit is Ernest Marshall, a tight end, a junior from College Park, Georgia, and I don't recall mentioning his name prior to this afternoon's football contest. Well, you're right, and he hasn't played much, but uh, as you remember, David Banks missed last week with a bad ankle, and uh, he's coming up limping a little bit there, so uh, we're going to get Marshall in and get him some experience. Banks has already caught a touchdown pass, but as John said, had his ankle all wrapped up in tape. Hatch is under the center. Dominic Ross behind him. Now he moves up two steps. Hatch is going to throw quickly this side to Calvin Walker. Walker's at the 20. Can he turn the corner? He cannot. It's Calvin heads Walker. up tackling that time by the aforementioned Brian Richardson as Walker had nowhere to go after he caught the football. Mike, we might mention that Chris Hatcher, uh, with his three touchdown passes thus far in the first half, now has 29 on a year. So, uh, He's increasing that Gulf South Conference record every time he throws one. Breaks a record every time he steps onto the field. For VSU, it'll be a second and 10. The ball's at the 19 and a half yard line. We're tied at 21 with MC. Mississippi College, the Chuck Toss from Clinton on a Saturday afternoon. Hatch is going to be under the center. Dominique Ross is going to be the lone setback behind him. Robert Williams split out wide to the right side. Calvin Walker is on the left side. Flash Flanders has already caught two touchdown passes this afternoon. Banks has caught one. Hatch is looking right. Got his man Bean Pole. Robert Williams at the 20. Can he dance? He can dance to the 25, to the 26, 27 yard line. Robert Williams is going to be two yards short of the first Robert down. Williams it looked like they had him right at the line of scrimmage, but he was able to maintain his balance and stay on his feet. Coming over to make the stop for MC is Keith Martin, the senior D back from McMinnville, Tennessee. The wide receiver, middle screen. Robert Williams lines up on the right side and comes back into the middle of the field. Chris Hatcher flips the ball to him, and he gets behind the blockers there, but that time cut it all the way back across the field and picked up eight yards. Hatch is under the center. Dominique Ross and Blake Duncan in the backfield. Going to give it to Ross. Ross across the 30 to the 32 to the 33-yard line. First down, Blazers, and a flag down. And a flag down, and we'll... Try to decipher that one for you is getting up very slowly from that line is Jimmy King playing that tight end spot, the junior from Buford leading the play for Dominique. It's going to be a face mask against the Chuck Toss. Well, what do you know? We got a penalty on them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean to say that. <laughs> one of the few times it has happened on this homecoming afternoon. It'll be inadvertent, so it'll be five yards. Blazers had a first down anyway. A minute, left in the half. I wish they would have known so much time was left. He just said that, and I didn't pick that up. It, uh, something in 45 seconds, but I don't know. Blazers don't appear to be in the two-minute offense, so obviously there must be uh, enough time. 21-21 in the second quarter. Blazers trail 21-7 early. Here's Hatch in the gun. Three-step drop. Looking down the field. Got his man, Steve Breer, and he put the ball into 35. at the same time and Greer took a lick but kept on ticking all the way down to the 24 yard line his hat's a little touch pass right over the middle and Greer hauled it in but you could see a collision coming and Greer bounced out of that collision and took it for a blazer first down at the 24 yard line. Tremendous catch tremendous concentration by Steve Greer right down the middle of the field uh, boy, big play for the Blazers. You know the Choctaws come in only had four interceptions and it looked like they were going to get one there but no sir Hatch, three-step drop, looking right side, got Dominic Ross at the 20. He'll take it to the 15, to the 14-yard line. Dominic Another Ross first down for VSU, and the man who made the stop was Richard Myers. Now this offense is cooking. Exactly right. I'm just going to say that. You're starting to, starting to see the old Blazer machine starting to roll. Yeah, that's, uh, they're doing it a little bit on the run, and they're doing it on the pass. 
They'll take a timeout to set things up for this touchdown drive. This is the Blazer Sports Network. Here's Hatch in the gun. He's got John Bender on his left and Dominique Ross on his right. Motion man is Steve Greer to the home side. Blazers all in black on this homecoming afternoon. Fakes the run now looking into the end zone. Throws it short. It's going to be incomplete to Pender at the 12-yard line. White shirts played that one pretty well. Yeah, like we had a bust on the offensive line there for uh, Mississippi College. Number 98, Roderick Upshaw penetrated there. It came right into Chris Hatcher's face, and uh, he basically just... Uh, throwing that ball away to Sean Pender. Uh, as what we know now, I just went over and stepped over during the break, talked to the Blazer coaches. They think there's about a minute left uh, in the first half. As we told you, the clock is out, so we don't exactly know. But, uh, of course, the incompletion there will stop the clock. Tied at 21. Blazers hoping to untie it right here. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. The football resting at the 13-yard line, 13 yards away from Bader, Glory Land, touchdown country, low snap. Hatch looking left side, has to hurry his throw, catches the ball, Calvin Walker at the five-yard line. It'll be a yard short of the first down. So the Blazers will have third and one at the five, and the clock will continue to run over how much time is left. And now let's see if MC, and they do, call timeout. Blazers are going to send some tight ends into the football game on this short yardage situation. Jimmy King's in there. David Banks is in there. Dominic Ross is the lone setback. Hatch is under the center on third and one. Blake Duncan on the right side. Going to give to Ross across the five to the three. Dominic First Ross. down, BSU. First and goal for the Blazers. Got to keep an eye on that clock. If we knew how much time was left, we would certainly tell you, but they will stop the clock. McBeath made the tackle for Ross. MC. Well, it was 45 seconds prior to that play there. They've stopped the clock. Uh, well, they're going to measure. They don't, I don't. I thought for sure he had the first down, but it looks like they're going to. Well, let's see. Looked like there wouldn't be any question about it. He had great forward motion that time. Hatch is going to come over and talk with Hal Mummy. Yeah, it is first down, so apparently the Blazers called, called uh, uh, a timeout. Trying to get this one in and take a 28-7 lead. That's being down 21-7 and then coming back and leading 28-21. What a comeback. But as you said, this offense is capable of doing that every single night. Down on the field, they're going to... Hal Mummy is out on the field. Now he's going to motion Hatcher back over there and also Calvin Walker back over there. Well, I think the question was... It looked to me like Chris Hatcher looked back at Hal Mummy and held up his hands, you know, do you, signaling a timeout to Hal Mummy. And I think he was saying, hey, coach, do you want me to take a timeout? And, and I, I think Hal Mummy said, no, I don't want you to. But unfortunately, I think the officials saw Chris Hatcher do that and went ahead and called timeout. So uh, I think actually they wanted to try to get a playoff there and then call time, uh, or at least save the, the timeout for the field goal, because I think that was their third timeout. The Blazers will take the timeout, and then Hal Mummy's making the signal out to Hatcher, and he's going to put his hat back on and get under the center and try to get six more right here with just seconds to go in the first half. Tied at 21 against Mississippi College on a homecoming afternoon. Hatch is in the gun. Got Dominique Ross on his right, Sean Bender on his left. Calvin Walker split wide to the left. Now he moves Bender into the slot on the left side. Hatch looking left all the way. Got his man in. And the Blazers are on the board. Here's Loree to come on and try to do something with the PAT and give the Blazers a seven-point advantage. Got to be under 30 seconds to go in the first, in the second quarter. Well, I hope we don't have to kick back off to him. That's true. And you give Glover a chance to touch the football again. Here's Loree for the extra point. Looked like they jumped. It's up, and it is good. Blazers 28, Mississippi College. 21, and that's a good feeling right there. That's a great feeling right there to come back from a 21 to 7 deficit. And you see Edward Mitchell coming off trying to get this crowd on its feet, and he does accomplish that as his homecoming crowd, the alumni, like to see this, and they like to see an exciting high score in football game, and that's exactly what it has been. Four touchdown passes for Chris Hatcher. That's 30 on the year. Boy. 
When will it end? Let's hope, let's hope not for a while. For sure. It was interesting to see last week Heath Schuler, the great quarterback for Tennessee, broke the all-time Tennessee record with 18 touchdown passes in a season. I, was, I thought it would be a lot higher than that. Well, you know, that, and that kind of tells you a little bit. I mean, here's Heath Schuler, and obviously he's Division One, playing in a great conference, but 18 touchdown passes. And they're mentioning Heath Schuler for the Heisman Trophy. So I think, you know, Chris Hatcher's here with 30 touchdown passes and only four interceptions. And uh, I think you got to start talking Harlan Hill trophy for him. And uh, he certainly needs to be considered for that thing. There's no question. He is quite a fine player and just a junior. Let's look down and see. And I believe for Beach, it's going to be his first touchdown catch of the year. And it will be. Mark Beach catches his first TD of the, check that, Sean Pender, not Mark Beach. Sean Pender catches his let me check those records. Yeah, again. I had written Pender down, so I... Yeah, I, it I, is Pender. It's, okay. It's Pender. Let's see if he caught one. Or, yeah, he, that's his second one. He caught one other prior to that one. Second touchdown catch of the year for Sean Pender and the Blazers lead 28-21. Here's Dillard with the kickoff. Glover is back there at the five, at the 10-yard line, just waiting and waiting. He's already had an 80-yard return this afternoon. Let's hope he doesn't duplicate that feat here. Maybe we won't even kick it to him, and we don't. It'll be low, line drive on the ground, taking it to 30, to the 32, to the 33. We'll try to knock his legs out from under him. Still on his feet, far side of the field. Ran all the way across the field. Knocked down at the 34. The man who returned the football was Mario Hansbro, the tight end, the junior from Winona, Mississippi. It'll be Choctaw football, just seconds remaining in the first half. John Lastinger at halftime. He'll tell you about homecoming and he'll update you the stats around the Gulf South Conference. Blazers have come from a 21-7 hole to a 28-21 lead. We may have the largest homecoming court ever assembled in collegiate ranks. <laughs> I'll, I will preview that much. Homecoming, 1993. Is Glover back in at quarterback? Got a split backfield behind him. He's going to stay on the ground to his tailback, and that's going to be Glover. Glover's going to take it to the 44-yard line, close to a MC first down. And they're going to take a timeout. On the first play after the timeout, Baker's going to throw it as hard as he can down the field, and it lands harmlessly down at the five-yard line, and that will be the last play of the first half, and the Blazers go off the field and get a nice hand from the homecoming crowd after two quarters of play. Your score, Valdosta State University, 28, Mississippi College, 21. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Department of Music at Valdosta State University is proud to present for your listening and viewing pleasure the Valdosta State University Blazing Brigade. Thank you. 
this portion of the halftime show by featuring our lovely auxiliary groups performing to the Andrews Sisters hit, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. stand now and join in the singing of the Valdosta State University alma mater, conducted by Mr. Bar Mark Belsick, Director of University Bands. And now we would like to recognize the 1993 homecoming candidates. Miss Becky Barnett, sponsored by Pi Kappa Phi Fraternity and escorted by Mr. Richard Scobie. Miss Ginger Beatty is sponsored by the Campus Activities Board and escorted by Mr. Ronald Beatty. 
Miss Allison Clark, sponsored by the Baptist Student Union and escorted by Mr. Alton Clark. Miss Marlene Dunbar is sponsored by Zeta Tau Alpha Sorority and escorted by Mr. James Dunbar. Miss Christine Folsom, sponsored by Sigma Alpha Iota and escorted by Mr. David Van White. Miss Megan Gorman is sponsored by the Student Government Association and escorted by Mr. Bill Miller. Miss Marcy Hobbs, sponsored by the VSU Red Cross and escorted by Mr. Harold Hobbs. Miss Amy Morris is sponsored by Delta Chi Fraternity and escorted by Mr. Tony Morris. Miss Adriana Adderley, sponsored by the Society of International Students and escorted by Mr. Anthony Mahler. Miss Sissy Anderson is sponsored by Alpha Delta Pi Sorority and escorted by Mr. John Alexander. Miss Stephanie Gooden, sponsored by the Black Student League and escorted by Mr. Stephen Gooden. Miss Nicole Klosky is sponsored by Kappa Alpha Order and escorted by Mr. Michael Smith. Miss Christy Linus, sponsored by Kappa Delta Sorority and escorted by Mr. Bob Linus. Miss Teresa McCann is sponsored by the Blazer Girls and escorted by Mr. Bill McCann. Miss Leanne Passmore, sponsored by the Political Science Club and escorted by Mr. Andy Cooper. Miss Ashley Pilot is sponsored by the Wesley Foundation and escorted by Reverend Andy Pilot. Miss Michelle Rhodes, sponsored by Pi Alpha and escorted by Mr. Ron Rhodes. Miss Jennifer Robinson is sponsored by Phi Mu Fraternity and Sigma Alpha Epsilon Fraternity and escorted by Mr. Kit Gravel. Miss Julie Seal, sponsored by Chi Omega Sorority and escorted by Mr. Mike Seal. Miss Sonia Sellers is sponsored by the VSU Ambassadors and escorted by Mr. Jerry Sellers. Miss Stephanie Van Hook, sponsored by the Blazing Brigade and escorted by Mr. Don Van Hook. Miss Danielle Zagari is sponsored by Ta Kappa Epsilon Fraternity and escorted by Mr. Craig Spencer. The homecoming court was voted on by the student body on Tuesday of this week. The court consists of the five girls receiving the most voters during the election. Flowers will be presented to the homecoming court by Mr. Uday Echo, President, Student Government Association. The 1993 homecoming court in alphabetical order is as follows. Adriana Adderley. Sissy Anderson, Stephanie Gooden, Nicole Klosky, and Christy Linus. On Thursday of this week, the student body selected a homecoming queen from this court. And now we present the 1993 homecoming queen Miss Adriana Adderley. The Queen will be crowned by Valdosta State University President Hugh C. Bailey. She will be presented roses by Miss Lisa Dickert, the Valdosta State University Homecoming Queen, 1992.
Here we are underway in the second half. The kickoff's a low line drive on the ground, takes six bounces, and then pops up in the air. Glover's going to get it to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. Going to be pulled up by Ryan Branch, the freshman from Tipton, Georgia. Always in there on the kickoff return team. And boy, did his team ever get a tough one last night. They lost to Coffee County 35-7. to There's a player down on the field. It's Shadrick Green. The freshman from Valdosta High School laying down on the turf right at the 20-yard line, and we hope that freshman is okay. He caught a touchdown pass a couple of weeks ago against Tarleton State. Laser defense comes out on the field, but Shadra Green is still down at the 20-yard line, and Hal Mummy immediately starts walking toward him. The trainers are already out there, and now the head coach of the VSU Blazers is going to go out there and take a look. While they attend to him, we'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. In today's educational system, where many bemoan the American public classroom as a place where young people cannot learn, Joe Clark has made a difference. On Tuesday, October 26th at 7.30 p.m. at Valdosta State University, Joe Clark will share his beliefs, strategies, and success stories. His message is one of pride in self, the value of academics, and how commitment to youth and community can make America's future leaders better citizens and better people. Looks like Shadrick's okay. Brad Strom at quarterback for the visitors from Clinton, Mississippi, trailing 28-21 at halftime. They've mixed up he and Cedric Baker. Strom's under the center. Two men in the backfield. One man on the right side, one on the left side. Blazers jump. No call. They're going to give it to the halfback. Here's Blackman across the 25. Erasmus Harvey in there on the side. And let's see. Also... John's giving me some hand signals here, but I can't interpret them. Uh, also, John Henson there, the big nose guard from Bainbridge, is there in on the stop. Just underway in the third quarter. The clock is still not knowing how much time left in the third quarter. Strom's going to be under the center again. It's a two-yard gain for Kevin Blackman. Got a motion man to the home side. Strom's going to take a long snap count, pitch it deep to Blackman. Blackman's going to come out of the backfield at the 25 to the 30 to the 33, 30 is down. Edward Mitchell made the stop, but there's a flag down back at the 20. But we'll see what the flag is about. It'll be against the ASU. You got an offside call on the Blazers. Not sure if somebody obviously must have lined up there. Uh, the Mississippi College come with that lead option. You know, good job by Shea Williams. Uh, really leveled Strom. But, uh, of course, being at Hopton, Strom just flips it out there to to Blackman, and uh, he picks up uh, six or seven yards. 28-21, Valdosta State University. The temperature has fallen just a bit. Had a magnificent homecoming court at halftime. They were spread all out across Cleveland Field, and they're going to measure for it and see what it looks like. Going to stretch it out. And, John, you've got a basketball message for us. That's right, Mike. It's not too early to begin thinking about Valdosta State University basketball and all the excitement that will be in the arena this year. Like last year, the VSU Athletic Department and Tommy Griner Pontiac Cadillac Nissan will give away a brand new car to some lucky basketball fan. The 94 Pontiac Sunburn will, will be given away at halftime of the last home game of the season. Every time you come to a Blazer or Lady Blazer basketball game, you increase your chances of winning. The VSU Athletic Department salutes Tommy Griner Pontiac Cadillac Nissan for their support of VSU athletics. It's going to be short of the first down. Basketball practice starts Saturday for James Dominey and Charles Cooper. They said November 1st. They switched it back to October 30th. The penalty is declined, and they will take the third and inches. Here's Strom under the center again. You got Cla Blackman jumping up and down on both feet, standing back there at the 27-yard line, trying to stay loose. Just underway in the third quarter, and the Blazers lead at 28-21 after digging themselves out of a 21-7 hole early in the second period. Strom's looking over the sideline now. The official has things set and we're underway as the white shirts from Clinton bring them up. Strom and Baker have alternated. He'll go straight ahead. Edward Mitchell made him head on, but he'll get across the 35. He'll get the first down. First down, Jock Taws. He'll maintain possession of the football and try to tie this thing up here, trailing by seven right now in the third quarter. Got a final from Athens, Mike. Uh, University of Georgia 33, Kentucky 28. So, uh... Georgia gets a big win over Kentucky and uh, evens their record at four and four. Tremendous win, and believe it or not, folks, still a chance for the Dogs to go to a bowl, and we're pulling for them to win right through the rest of the way. 
Gators. Here's Strom under the center again on first down. Two men in the backfield, one man on the right side, one on the left. Going to roll left. Now he comes back to the right. He's being chased by Hampton. Blackman cannot hang on. Threw it right over Blackman's head at the 40-yard line. He could have run forever had he caught the football because the Blazers came with everybody. Got a foot too high. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I don't think it was a breakdown in coverage. It looked like we had a blitz on, and uh, so there was really nobody to take a tremendous break for the Blazers because if he, if he catches that football, he's got 15 yards of running before anybody is near him. But as it is, it's just an incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10 at the 36. Center again, split backfield behind him. Wide outs left and right, one on each side. Going to go to his tailback right across the middle. He's going to gain maybe a yard, maybe two yards. Erasmus Harvey is in there on the stop, along with Marcus Johnson. And let's see where they're going to spot the football. Getting up very slowly this time is Glover, the man who returned the kickoff earlier for about 90 yards and set up one of the MC touchdowns. Glover's going to gain two on the play. Call it third and eight. Right at the 34-yard line, that's the MC 34. See, this one has really turned into a hard-nosed football game. Uh, uh, this is not a place for women and children on that field. There's a lot of short temper. Blazers rush four with three linebackers. Going to take a deep drop, look to throw out of there. Got his man, he got hit hard at the 47, but he hung on. That's a lot of guts and determination right there as Tony Hill came over as soon as the ball touched his chest. I mean, he just jammed him very, very hard, and that's a great play by Andy Dart, the sophomore from Clinton, Louisiana, for the visitors from Mississippi College. It will be a first down for the Choctaws. Yeah, nice, nice catch by Andy Dart. Good concentration because he really took a shot from Tony Hill and Marcus Johnson as he caught it, but uh, credit Brad Strom, the, the Choctaw quarterback, as he stepped back, was under a little pressure, just stepped up in the pocket and a little page from Chris Andrews book and fired a strike in there. Here's Strom under the center again. Wants to pitch it deep. Looks like he ran the wrong way, but Glover's going to cut it back up and get hit hard. John Hitson come in and put his helmet right in his chest. Andre Hampton is there as well, and they knock him down two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Looked like Glover ran the wrong way. That he made when he was about to pitch the football to it. Yeah, he did. Just a, a simple toss sweep. And as you said, Strom turned to pitch it uh, to his uh, right side. And there was no running back there. And then quickly, uh, like uh, Blackman realized he made a mistake and just cut it back. By that time, though, the Blazers had tremendous pursuit uh, and were able to throw him for a two-yard loss. It'll be second and 12. The ball's at the back on the MC side of the field. <laughs> They're all mixed up, and they're going to call a timeout. Now they have things straightened out, and Strom is going to go back and look to throw the football out to the left side. Got a man there. Blackman's going to get caught as he caught it. And George Parsons is there to make the stop as Blackman caught it right at the 49-yard line. No gain on the play. Actually, about a yard gain because they were two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now it'll be third and 10 at the 49-yard line. Big game in the conference this afternoon. North Alabama at Central Arkansas. In the first quarter, Central Arkansas was leading the Lions from Florence. Yeah, that, as we got talked about at halftime, yeah, Central Arkansas kind of the, the sleeper in the conference thus far this year. Uh, they're really, really playing well. And the Blazers do not have to play Central Arkansas. Arkansas schools and will go out west on the second Saturday in November. Strom's going to fake the run and look to throw. Gets it out left side. Blackman again to any ball down. Blackman fell down. Edward Mitchell was going to try to tackle him. He slipped down and then Blackman slipped down. To force him down, but boy, and it's a good play and a good thing he did because I think Blackman, had he kept his feet, looked like he had a lot of running room. Just a uh, a throwback screen uh, where Strom's going to roll to his right and look downfield and turns and throws back across the field on the screen pass. And uh, uh, but, uh, but Mitchell did what he had to do. Flash Flanders down there to leading. And they knock the kicker down. It'll be roughing the kicker. 23-yard line. Edward Mitchell's going to get called for roughing the kicker, I do believe. Yeah, I think so. But let's see, will it be, will it be an automatic first down? 
That's the question because it was fourth and about 16 to go for the first down when they punted it away. The ball's resting at the 23-yard line of the Blazers. Edward Mitchell came in there and knocked Mike Nelson's feet out from under him. Now, if they mark off 15 yards, they do not have the first down. But if it's an automatic, of course they do. Blazers will be in the Delta next Saturday. John and I will get up early next Saturday morning and fly to Cleveland, Mississippi, one of the hot spots of our land and something that we're certainly looking forward to with great anticipation. And next Saturday night, we'll be live on the Blazers Sports Network from Cleveland, Mississippi, home of Delta State University. I tell you, Mike, this uh, Blazer linebacking crew, George Parsons was injured in the first half, uh, had a little pinch nerve in his shoulder, but he's back onto the playing field. And now we see Edward Mitchell comes off He's holding a hamstring, so uh, uh, we got freshman Gilbert Armour in the ball game now. And Gilbert, uh, certainly a highly recruited, highly talented out of high school, but has played very little college football, so uh, we'll have to keep an eye because we're getting a little thin there at linebacker. It's only a five-yard penalty, so now it'll be fourth and 12. And John was right. It was the key was was it's an automatic, and it is not. So. He'll put it again, and this time from his own 40-yard line. To return it if he wants to, and he does at the three. Reversing direction at the five, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and knocked out at the 21. Oh, boy, you hold your breath every time the flash touches the football. i tell you what, that uh, you usually don't like to see a punt returner dip inside the 10-yard line to catch one. That time, Stanley Flanders inside the three and catches it and uh, as I'm looking out we got a late penalty flag and it's going to go against the Blazers for uh, unsportsmanlike conduct I think and uh, that's exactly what it is and that's, that's a terrible <laughs> I mean that's just not good I mean it's uh, what can you say it's just sitting here and saw the flag come out I saw some of the Blazer players running their mouth and uh, they're going to get caught and uh, you know uh, Let's talk about that. This team is, is the most penalized team in the conference, and, you know, officials know that. They say, well, obviously they must be doing something wrong, so, uh, so they throw the flag. You know, this is unusual, but that, that takes away a, a good punt return. As we said, Flanders not supposed to dip inside the 10, but caught it and made a great return out to the 20, but it comes back due to the penalty. The flag wipes it out. Now Hatch is at the 10-yard line under the center. Dominic Ross, the lone setback. Got a motion, man. It's... Sean Pender, he's going to give it to Ruiz. Ruiz comes out on the left side, got some running around five, 10 yards, 12, 14, still on his feet, knocked down at the 24-yard line. He was carrying a Choctaw on his back like a papoose on his back. He was carrying right along there. Shannon Garrett riding the old papoose method on Dominique Ross's back, and he picked up a first down coming out of the backfield. Well, that's, I tell you what, uh, we've seen that this year. That's not the way to bring Dominic Ross down is jump on his back uh, because he's got the strength that he'll just carry you right along with him. Hatch under the center again. Don't know how much time's left. We're in the third quarter. Blazers lead 28-21. They show blitz but do not go with it. Dominic Ross off the right tackle to the 25 to the 28-yard line and another flag down. And while we interpret that flag, we'll allow our stations along the line to identify themselves. This is the Blazers Sports Network. going to be a holding call against the flame red and black on a homecoming afternoon at Cleveland Field. Here's the 10-yard penalty being marked off by the guy in the stripes. Valdosta State University will see the football back at the 15-yard line. And as John said earlier, we're seeing the ball move in the wrong direction because of these penalties. First and about 16 now. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's one area where I will differ from Hal Mummy. He's not all that concerned about penalties, but I, on the other hand, think that they'll just, uh, they can really, really hurt you. Actually, first in about 19. Hatch is under the center. Short drop. Looking right side. Throws the short one to Ross. Ross at the 15, 20, 21, 22 yard line and pulled down at the 22 by Richard Myers, the senior defensive end from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Blazers lead 28-21 in the third quarter. Blake Duncan runs onto the field. We had some concern about Blake earlier as he was very gingerly walking off the field in the second quarter, but apparently he's okay. Sean Fender's going to be in the backfield along with Duncan. Hatch is your quarterback, and he is in the shotgun. Got Robert Williams, the beanpole on the right side. Steve Greer in the slot on the right side. Calvin Walker on the left. 
looking to Walker all the way. Now he comes back over the middle of the field. Got Greer at the 37 to the 40 to the 42 yard line. They took his head off. They took his head off, but he still got the first down. And Steve Greer is just now putting his hat back on after having it snapped from his head by Brian Richardson, the junior from Forest, Mississippi. First down, BSU. Nice play. Nice call by Hal Mummy that time. Uh, just. Uh, Nothing fancy, but it's flooded that left side with the receivers and then worked Steve Greer right down the middle there. And uh, you just can't cover them all. And uh, Chris Hatcher is so good at finding the open man and uh, just threw a strike in there to Steve Greer. Hatch under the center. Dominique Ross is long set back. Now he shifts out of there into the shotgun formation. Three wideouts on the left side. Floods that left side. He's got to find somebody. He does. It's Dominic Ross right over the middle of the 45. Does he get to the 46? No, he does not. McBeath, the linebacker, comes in there and tackles him at the 45 after a one-yard gain. It'll be second and nine for the Blazers of Hal Mummy. How many catches now for Greer? That was his sixth catch. I was just looking at that. Had five catches for 85 yards in the first half. That one uh, covered over 20 yards, so that puts him over 100 yards for the third time this season in the second straight week. So, uh, he has moved all the way up to third in the conference in receiving, and he's certainly not hurting himself uh, uh, here today. And the Blazers won last week's game. I believe he would have been the Gulf South Conference Player of the Week with 12 grabs against West Georgia. Hatch looks down the field, got Greer at the 45, to the 40, to the 38, to the 36-yard line. Steve Greer again, and Richard Myers is able to bring him down finally, but it's another VSU first down. John, we see so much attention being focused on Calvin Walker, and all of a sudden Greer finds spaces out there that, that we used to see Calvin in. Uh, you're exactly right. They double up somebody, and they leave somebody else open. But at that time, uh, we, we sent Blake Duncan on a little swing pass there, but they covered him. Uh, we've had a lot of success on the swing pass, but that time Chris Hatcher said, okay, you cover him. I'll just look downfield, and he finds Greer. Hatch in the gun. Looking to throw over the middle. Got his man bean pole. Robert Williams to the 25 to the 22 yard line. Robert Williams, another DSU first down. Oh my, this is how well this offense can play right here. Keith Martin, the senior from Minneville, Tennessee, is the man who brought him down. Well, yeah, you're right. This offense here really starting to, to click on all cylinders, starting to get the running game involved and having a little bit of success there, although not the success we saw early in the year. But, boy, this passing game is really looking good, and uh, Chris Hatcher on his way to another record-setting day. 28-21, Blazers by seven in the third quarter. Clock is malfunctioned. We don't know how much time, and it drives you crazy to look up there and not know how much time. Hatch throwing the short route over the middle. Flash Flanders at the eight. Does he get free? He drops the football at the five. He dropped the football at the five-yard line, but does, is he able to jump on it? I think yes. First down, VSU, and Flash caught the pass and then took it down to the five-yard line. He's already caught a couple of sixes this afternoon. 